getting this lube all over the place. Ugh. Hello, internet people. Hi. I'm gonna do some work on the MR2 in this video. If you're new, up on the ceiling is a playlist on Project MR2. It'll get you caught up. Hopefully this is the last video of the entire suspension overhaul of the MR2. All I got left is the rear. Without further ado, I'm gonna shut up and get to work. First things first, I gotta get these wheels off. Yeah, you like that? Why is the juice turned down? Crank that juice a little bit. And you're off. Ugh. So I do have an upgraded rear anti-sway bar on this car already, which means the bushings have been done. And the rear end links I got new ones for. Of course, I got the Coney yellows that are gonna be going in here. And I got all the new bushings, which I think I might just do one rod at a time, replace the bushing, reinstall it, and then when it comes to the strut, do the same thing. Just remove the strut, replace it, and put it back in instead of ripping it all apart. All right, I'm gonna try to preserve my alignment specs just to get me to the alignment shop by marking this off. 14 threads, just like the front. That's out. Once I got a new ball joint. Ooh, this ball joint is torn bad. Good. Good thing I got a new one. Okay. Look at that. This rear ball joint boot was completely torn open. These are going to take a lot of cleaning up, but it must be done. One side's done. I'm going to snap my fingers and the other side will be done because I don't need to show you doing it twice. I think you get the point, right? Okay. I can't snap my left fingers. <laughs> That's so hard. I can't do it. Now that's out of the way. It's actually a week later from the first two minutes of this video. Life happened. Anyway, back to work. This is absolutely disgusting. It looks like the bottom of an oven that hasn't been cleaned in 10 years. But I got both of them off the car and now it's time to make them look new. how well is cleaned up with the wire wheel. It took all the grease off and the powder coating underneath is intact. FYI, I don't care about the threads on this. It's an old one, it's getting replaced. Jeez, Dudo. Oh, that was too much. Yep, that, that ball joint's bad. There's that. Got it. These old ones are nasty, but they're out. I need to show you something because I ordered some more parts and I know a lot of you are gonna be extremely happy I ordered this. If you look right here at the new ball joints on the front of the car where they connect to my lower control arm, this is really hard to show with my finger, but right here, since this car is lowered 1.3, 1.4 inches or so, I need to address bump steer and roll center correction on this car. And someone did mention this to me a few videos ago and it just like slipped my mind. I never bothered researching it, but it's critical I do that on this car and I'll show you why. The easiest way I can explain this without going all engineering explained because I'm not an engineer, so I'm gonna keep it simple, is my suspension currently with the car lowered is looking something more like this. Now this is my lower control arm, this fatter line, and up here is my tie rod. Now the way it should be is at more of a rake going the opposite direction, which is going to matter during hard cornering, especially on power. And if I leave it like this, it's gonna make the car twitchy and unpredictable. So what I need to do is put a spacer below the lower control arm here and my tie rod right here, which will correct 
the geometry so it looks like this and not like this. I did find a kit that includes everything to do this roll center bump steer correction online, but it's like $700 and it's way more than I already need because of the fact that I already ordered a roll center correction kit. I just need the bump steer. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to engineer it myself. Maybe I can use some parts from the Toyota 86 bump steer correction kit. I'll have to see, do some measurements. That way I make this precise. And yes, it's a new day and my shirt does says Gump on it. And speaking of Gump, he's out in the driveway running because I haven't driven him in like over a month. I'm glad I have this hydraulic press now to push out bushings, but I'd be lying if I said I don't get nervous when I use this thing. So I try to put something in front of the stuff that I'm pressing out to protect myself from sockets or parts flying out at my face. I got lucky and these bushings pressed out fairly easily. I had to use a razor blade to trim some of the rubber back, but other than that, they're all out now. So time to get the center ones, center doodads right here. And on top of that, these just arrived. These are my roll center correction plates that go underneath the ball joints. There's some for the front and the rear of the car. And I ordered some new hardware from Toyota because these are torque to yield. They had the green stuff on them. And the other ones were looking kind of nasty, so, yay. Ooh, that's tight. I got some painting to do on these rear suspension parts. I'm not gonna film it though, because I don't want to get paint on my camera lens, okay? Okay. Totally forgot to install these in the last video. These are the chassis strengthening plates that go up under where my anti sway bar mounts right here. These are known to cracking in this area of the frame. So this plate is gonna beef up this area. Oh, I wanna clean under here so bad. Where's my tool? What size are you? I think you're a 12 millimeter. Two bolts. It actually came with new hardware too, so that's really nice. I bought it on mr2heaven.com, in case you guys are wondering. It's not sponsored. Just letting you know where I bought it. Oh, I see how it goes. It goes just like that. Look at that. I know I do this every video, but that bolt looks brand new. Love this car. Where are the holes? That's what he said. All right, I got this thing loosely threaded up into place. I'm gonna clean up the other side. I'm using my heat gun and a rag and I'm getting the grease and dirt and grime really hot underneath here and then scrubbing it right off. Works really well. I gotta do the entire underneath of this car eventually though. I'm gonna get it on a lift and pressure wash it. I'm that OCD. This is a driver's car though. It's not a show car. I just want it clean. Look at that, freshly coated. And I got my new end links, all the bushings, grease, and then I got some OEM bolts from Toyota and the nuts that I ordered, the roll center correctors, brand new ball joints. And uh, yeah, it's ready for reassembly. So let's reassemble. Before I assemble this, I'm gonna use my wire wheel and knock off some of this epoxy coating on this surface right here, as well as these surfaces, so that way they're nice and machined the way they're supposed to be from the factory. There, just like that. Clean. Yeah, get in there, frost that hole. <laughs> so disgusting. All right. Getting this lube all over the place. Ooh. I have to like triple check this and make sure I don't screw it up. Spin that thing around. Lots of lube on you too. I really wish I could eat a pastry strudel right now. It would be so delicious. There you go. Lots of lube. Lower control arms, C arms are good to go, reassembled. I, however, am absolutely exhausted. Without getting too far into details, you guys know in the past couple of videos I've mentioned, I'm not running at 100%. I got some weird health thing going on. I haven't gotten sorted out. 
yet, so I don't have full energy, but I made some serious progress today regardless. That's something to get excited about. I wanna show you something that I have a little bit of an issue with my new rear ball joints. I just noticed, kinda of sucks. The tops of these ball joints are not the same. Despite ordering both of them from the same site, they sent me two different ball joints. They both fit, they're fine, they're just different manufacturers. Problem is, my roll center plates fits this one perfect, however this one it doesn't quite fit, doesn't go all the way down. You see there's a gap? That's because this center portion is a little bit larger. So that means I have to mill this out in the center, which obviously I can't do because I don't have a machine shop, but I do have somebody that could do that for me. So aside from that, <laughs> sorry, I'm like trying to get breath. I'm hungry. Anyway, check this out. I don't want to start tearing apart the struts on this thing because it's going to be another full day of work. If not, maybe a little more. Don't worry about the mess. That's the car cover. Anyway, down here, my pedals, which I'm missing a cover for, look kind of like crap, but one of you sent me a set of OEM Toyota metal pedals. So I'm going to put them on right now because, ouch. It's not a ton of work. I think these just pop right off. I think, yeah, these just pop right off. That's easy. Okay, this, I think the clutch and the brake are the exact same size. Pretty sure. Yep, clutch and brake, exact same size. Oh, these are fun to install. Kinda got it going on there. Damn. How in the hell? <laughs> There's gotta be a trick to this. It has to be a trick. Seems like everything I'm doing today requires lube. A little bit of lube. Well, this is tricky. This is real tricky. It's always the easiest tasks when it comes to work on a car that are the most difficult. I would much rather rebuild the suspension on this car and try to install a pedal cover. Ooh, I think I got this side. That's a pedal cover on right there. That is on. We'll lube these guys up and see if this works. That was a, a forearm workout, tell you what. I did just tell you what. I don't know why I say that. I'm not from a region of the world that says, I'll tell you what. Yep. Let's see if I can do this one with minimal lube. There we go. Got one corner. Damn. Almost. Those two are installed. Now I gotta do the gas pedal. There's something different about the gas pedal though. It doesn't just slip on like these two. I shouldn't say slip on because that was definitely not a slip. That was a fight on. And yes, my carpet is a little bit torn down there. I'm kind of excited about these pedals because of the fact that the throttle pedal is slightly different on these metal ones than the OE. Look. Take note at how this OE throttle pedal just goes straight down. It looks like a cookie. See this part right here? It helps with heel toe shifting. It's a little extension and the factory pedal doesn't have that. I don't know if this is gonna work. How the hell am I gonna do this? The pedal's gonna shake around if I try to hit it with this punch. So I have to remove the entire gas pedal assembly to change that pedal because I don't have a punch small enough to push the roll pin out. So. I'm just gonna do that when I do the rear struts. Simple as that, it's 8.30 at night and I haven't eaten dinner yet. So I'm gonna end the video here and I will see you guys soon with another. Bye.